Thanks for joining us today, folks. I'm Gabe Gersh, owner of Backwoods Pursuit, and today I've got a special guest with me here, Roger. He is a, uh, a firearms expert, and uh, much more so than myself, so I wanted to, to uh, get him uh, in on this video, because we're going to be talking about selecting a rifle scope, and if you find yourself looking for, uh, looking for a rifle scope or asking yourself, you know, what rifle scope should I buy? What all the numbers mean on a rifle scope? We're going to go through them and demonstrate uh, with some of these scopes here, you know, some of the differences between one scope and another and the process you want to go through when you're looking to put a new optic on your rifle. So, uh, welcome Roger. Thanks for joining me here today. Glad to be here. Yeah, good to have you. So, let's jump into this and get into the process of selecting a rifle scope. To start off, we're going to break this into a couple of parts here, uh, just because I want this to get too long for you. But we're going to break this into first kind of narrowing down your search and then get into a little bit more of the details on these scopes and what's important for you. It's going to be best for, uh, for yourself. So one of the first things that we want to look at is obviously going to be what's your use, uh, what's your, your max range, what are you comfortable shooting, and you know, kind of go from there when you're narrowing down uh, what scope you want to Pick, whether it's something like the Nikon here, which is a basic 3 to 9 by 40, all the way up to something like this larger Athlon, which is a 4.5 to 29, same with that Bushnell Elite Tactical XRS, or a huge range there in what those scopes can do. So speak to a little bit there, your experience and what you look for when you're narrowing down your scope search. You know, what I, what I really look for um, when I'm looking at a scope is kind of what I'm going to use it for. Um, the purpose behind it, whether it's you know, going to be on a long-range target rifle or right. whether it's going to be on a lightweight, you know, mountain rifle, right. um, you really got to tailor your scope for that. Um, with a lot of these scopes, you know, if you're going to look at like the Cortex Razor Gen 2, mm -hmm. we would say it was 40, 40, almost 47 yeah, ounces. Really That's heavy. almost three pounds. <laughs> Yeah. With just the scope, so if you're trying to build a lightweight sub right. eight pound mountain rifle, there's three pounds right there just right. in your scope. Right. So you're going to have to look at something a little bit different. You know, yeah. that's a lot of scope for a lightweight hunting rifle. Um, and but if when you really need that too, well, right? If you're going to build a you know 22 pound target rifle, yeah. sure, throw it on there. You know, yeah. you're trying to get a lot of weight in there. Yeah. Um, you know, I'll also look at what's the, the rifle intended. Like we just talked about a little bit ago, I have a Ruger Gunsight Scout. That's right. not a long range hunting rifle. Right. That's a, you know, 16 inch barrel 308, so it's closer quarters, kind of a quicker shot type of right. rifle. So I'm gonna look right. at something two to seven, you know, yeah. something lower magnification range. So um, what, what caliber are you shooting and what's your intended effective range? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you know, a lot of guys, you know, most, hunting shots are sub 400 yards yeah right. so right. you know you're going to be able to do that with a, a four and a half to what is that four and a half to 14 you know even a three the, to nine uh, loophole vx3 yeah. hd there you know scope, something yeah. like that even your old nikon three to yeah. nine um, your old you know, pro staff yeah, yeah. the yeah. steiner four to sixteen yeah. you know there's right. there's yeah. those types of scopes are really good all around scopes for mm -hmm. And it, a lot of guys try to get the, you know, the 28 power. They think they're going to need 28 power. Yeah. I've actually had a bad experience having too much magnification yeah. on the scope. I had a, a Steiner 5 to 25. Mm -hmm. Their their target rifle scope, first focal plane, thing was a beast. Yeah. Took it hunting. You end up cranking it to more power than you need. Right. 350 yards. I think I had that thing up to 20 power, right? So you <laughs> yeah. shoot even right. a 308, it bucks you out of the scope and then you can't find what you were just shooting at. Right. So you can you can have too much power, right. especially in a hunting scope. Yeah, and because guys tend to dial a little bit too much. Yeah. And that was a first focal plane scope. When you got a second focal plane scope, if you have, you know, like the, the Winplex reticles, mm -hmm. for instance, on this, those hash marks are calibrated generally for your full magnification, so right. 14 power. So if you're trying to use that Winplex reticle, yeah. the one MOA hashes, right. if it's not at 14 power, those those hashes yeah. aren't one MOA anymore. So right. you're gonna either have to know what that calibration is, right. you know, to dial down to a certain magnification, mm -hmm. or you're gonna have to have it all the way up if you're gonna use right. that. 
which isn't bad. Most of the time, if you're going to hold wind, right. you're probably going to shoot far enough anyway where you're going to need the 14 power. But if you had a scope that was 28 power, right. if you're trying to use the, you know, this one's probably what first focal plane I would imagine. Yeah, blues, yeah. yeah. So, you know, we'll talk more about first or second focal plane here a little bit, probably in part two of this video. Yeah. So you can really get into the weeds on that. But generally, do folks in your uh, in your experience do they go with the first focal plane or second focal plane? It's obviously personal preference on that. Right. It really yeah. depends on what you're going to try to do with the scope. Yeah. And for your standard hunter, you're not going to need first focal plane. They probably don't even know what first versus second focal plane right. is. Right. Um, and your standard hunter is going to do really well with a you know four and a half to fourteen. You know, with the Winplex reticle, I do like some type of a reticle that has some, some holds to it. Um, I really like the Winplex yeah. reticle because mm -hmm. traditionally I like dialing right. distance and holding wind. Yeah. Um, so having some type of a reticle that you can do that. Sure. You know, your standard duplex reticle is kind of a thing of the past yeah. anymore, especially yeah. with nowadays rifles are getting, we were just talking about your Mark 77 <laughs> here. The old yeah. Uh, yeah, so, Ruger M77 Mark know, 7 from Back when however. you bought that, you know, the, the <laughs> yeah. standard duplex reticle worked because a lot of the times the cartridges, the bullet yeah. selections, things like that, they just weren't tailored for those longer distance shots. Right. And so guys were, you know, you're fine to have a standard duplex right. reticle and, you know, do the, the old typical yeah. two inches high at 100 and, right. you know, you're holding hair out to 300, so you're yeah. fine. But, yeah. you know, guys that want to stretch the limits of their cartridge yeah. and their rifle capabilities nowadays right. are probably going to want a little bit more of a yeah. scope. Yeah. So kind of to go over what we've got here as far as the different scopes in the range, we kind of touched on the two extremes, something up to 30 power, four and a half to 30, um, and down to something like this Nikon, the three to nine by 40, just a real basic $100 type of rifle scope. We've also got the Bushnell Forge, uh, four and a half to 27 here. I don't know if they make this one anymore. I think they discontinued it, but um, then also the Bushnell Elite Tactical XRS2. Very, very similar to the Athlon as far as the specs and whatnot. Uh, this one here is the Sig Tango 4, and it's a 6 to 24, so it's a it's a, a, a 4x uh, type and of a scope. You, know, you can even speak on that. Yeah. You, starting off at a 6 power, Yeah. that's probably going to be a little bit too high for me for a hunting sure. scope, just for the mere fact that, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of times when you're busting through brush or something, right. you might have to pop up and take a shot, right. and when all you see is hair, it's hard right. to really differentiate where you're shooting. Yeah. And that's right. largely going to be, you know, where do you hunt? Is it closer quarters or you're going to need a much lower magnification on the low end? Or if it's wide open almost entirely. If you're animal off, hunting all the time and right. you're, everything's yeah. going to be 600 yards plus, exactly. you know, you're fine with that. Yep, yeah, you bet. Um, let's see over here. We've got the Leupold VX3 HD that just came out here in 2021. The Athlon Cronus, uh, which is a 4.5 to 29 monster scope with this 56 millimeter objective. Um, this one here is the Zeiss Conquest V4 uh, 50 millimeter objective, and it's the 6 to 24, also similar to that SIG. Uh, this is the Tract Toric, uh, let's see, 4 to 20 by 50, and then this is the Steiner uh, 4 to 16 by 50. Yeah, it um, hasn't been released yet, so I can't yeah. really talk too much about the, it's just the, the name Steiner. and everything, but it's a, it's a <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's what we've got here. Those are kind of our, our spectrums here from low end all the way up to some of the higher end stuff. And of course there's much higher end than what we've got That's here. Right. You, know, you, can get, you can get, <laughs> yeah. you get really, yeah. you really can get stupid there. expensive with stuff. And that's, yeah. that goes along, along with, what's your budget. What's your budget, right? yeah. you know, you're, If you're gonna buy, a, you know, a Tika $600, $700 rifle, yeah. are you gonna throw on a $3,000 scope? Some guys do, and that's yeah. fine. So if you got yeah. the money for it, man, go all in. Yeah. But you don't necessarily need that right. you know, hunting scope to have something that's reliable, that's right. repeatable. Yeah, it's going to function really well for you. Yeah, yeah. So, and that's that's really a big question for a lot of folks. What is your budget? If yeah. you're if you're just wanting to get out, I want to shoot 300 yards, and that's my top. I never want to go past that. You got a few hundred bucks, you know, a three to nine is going to be fine for you. Yeah. Or if you're going to set it, and forget like it. That, or if you're yeah. wanting to dial, yeah. you know, the craze nowadays yeah. is doing all the long range shooting, mm -hmm. and whether you're going to dial and yeah. everything, and yeah. you know, if you're out there shooting squirrels and you're you know, range finding out mm -hmm. to four or five, six hundred yards, and you got to have something that's going right. to dial really precise because you're right. have a really small target. Exactly. Yeah. Now, but some people just don't want to mess with that. No. You just yeah. want to grab Cap turrets, and, uh, set it, forget it. Yeah. yeah, be done with it. No. So, sure. you know, there's there's certainly a growing period going from a cap turret like this where you just 
unscrew that, go to the range, set it at 100, 200, 300, whatever your zero is, and just be done with it. You know, know what your bullet drop is at 300 yards and be done with that. Uh, but like you said, kind of uh, most of the scopes seem to be going to where you're, where you got these turrets. Uh, you can dial that in uh, once you've really done your homework and practiced out on the range. Know what, how your gun shoots, how your ammunition uh, shoots. You know what your bullet drop is and whatnot. Um, you know, there's benefits to it, but it can screw you up too if you're <laughs> if you're in a hurry for right. for get the zero back out and all of a sudden if you're, you're, if you're the guy yeah. that's that goes to Sportsman's Warehouse, buys a couple boxes of ammo, you know, yeah. looks on the back and says, oh, it should be going 2,800 feet per second. You yeah. don't chronograph your rifle. You don't go out yeah. and your, your, your data. You don't proof your data and you don't mm -hmm. you know, make sure it's all correct and everything. Yeah. You really have no business dialing up because you don't know right. where it's going to go. Right. You got to spend the time out there. Yeah. If you're going to shoot long range, you got to put the time in. Yeah. There's no yeah. scope that's out there that's going to substitute mm -hmm. range time practicing and knowing your equipment. There's yep. just nothing that's going to be the magic bullet, so to speak. Exactly, yeah. So last thing we're going to touch on before we go to part two here is the different methods here that you mount these scopes. Most of these have a, a Pectini rail um, of some kind. In fact, I think they all do. Yeah, uh, they all some sort. This one has kind of a, a two-piece Pectini rail, but a, a lot of times you can also mount the scopes directly onto right. the, the, the firearm, depending on what it is you know i used to have uh this nikon here back in the day mounted direct on this uh, ruger m77 um, and, and ruger's yeah. ruger's a good one to touch on uh, tika's used to yeah, too tika with the, they have an integrated dovetail right. basically built into the top ruger's have it tika's have it um, so you can get basically rings that just mount straight right. to that so you don't need a base for it mm -hmm. uh, and ruger's are a little bit different because your base your rear base is going to be taller or your rear ring's got to be taller than right. the front because of the yeah. offset of the action yeah. there but yeah you have Leopold makes those the dovetail ones where right. you basically put it in there and you have to turn and, and yeah. make sure that it's all lined up there's a little bit more steps to it because if you have those if rings off yeah. then you're yeah. you're kind of messing things up yeah. but that's that's really where your scope starts yeah. is on your bases and your rings because if you have I like to put it this way if, if your base is bowed Right. in the middle because your action's not square or yeah. your your base isn't square then you're going to start putting that bow all the way up into your scope and right. because of how fine all the adjustments are and all mm -hmm. the different lenses that come into this and with yeah. magnification and you know the focus of the parallax and everything if there's any flex or any bend in that scope you're going to completely throw off all those adjustments right. so that kind of right. goes into i like betting my base whether it's on you know a, two-piece base, one-piece base. Mm -hmm. uh, you can kind of get away from that with like a set of tally rings where it's uh, the base and the rings are all put mm -hmm. together in the same, mm -hmm. which are nice. It kind of takes out one step, one tolerance stacking that you got right. in there. Right. But it, it really, it's not just to screw it on there right. and it's gonna work. You kind of right. gotta, I like lapping my rings too, mm -hmm. just, yeah. you know, it, it's hard to tell if they're perfectly round and, and I want as much contact on that tube as I can but equal contact not right. smashing and yeah cool well part two we're going to touch a little bit more on the reticles turret systems how they're different locking non-locking a bunch of that kind of stuff tune in for part two we'll cover that here uh, thanks for joining us here today drop some questions if you have any for us uh, happy to help you uh, Roger's got a ton of knowledge here that really knows his stuff so we'd be happy to to weigh in and help point you to the right direction. So uh, tune in for part two next time.